In this video, we're going to take a look at parallel and perpendicular lines. So there's only really two rules to remember. Excuse me. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. In effect, the way that this works for perpendicular lines is you find a slope, and then you make the, you change the sign and you flip the fraction. That, that's it. That's the slope of the perpendicular. All right, so let's take a look at a few here. I got four that I'm going to do. Some are a little bit easier than others. So find a slope parallel to the y-axis that passes through the point negative 3, 2. Okay, so if we were to do this, just to kind of quickly draw this out here. So here's our, here's our axes. This is y, this is x. We want to find a line perpendicular parallel to the y-axis that passes through negative 3, 2. So it would be somewhere over here because it's going to be parallel, so it's going to be vertical, and it passes through the point negative 3. And negative 3, 2 is probably up in here somewhere, negative 3, 2. All right, so this takes on an x equals format. The value of all of the x uh, coordinates in this particular line are going to be the same. So this is going to be x equals something. That something happens to be the x value of the point that it moves through. So this is just going to be x equals negative 3. Now you can use it, you can use it as far as graphically to, to kind of give yourself a hint as to where the parallel or perpendicular line may be. If you don't want to do it graphically, then you have to understand that the y-axis is the line x equals 0, and the x-axis is the line y equals 0. And then you can just go ahead and operate it just like you would the, these next three. Find a line parallel to 2x minus 3y equals 6 and passing through the point 2, 7. A couple of ways to do this. Uh, I've made videos, I believe, in the past covering how do I write an equation given a slope and, an, and, a, and a point. You can use the point-slope form of, of the line. So it's y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. When you are given the slope, m is the slope. And your point that you're given is x1 comma comma y1 and that's it so you can use that you can also use the slope intercept form typically y equals mx plus b so now it doesn't really matter which one you use if it just says find a line or find an equation and equation it doesn't specify the form you need to report it in it's usually easier if you can remember the point slope form because you literally just chuck all of the information into it and leave it and move on. If you don't remember how to use that that you have this point slope form or you end up having to uh, produce it into uh, the slope intercept form, it may be easier to start that way. It's 50-50. Half my students love one way, half my students love another way. Me, it doesn't matter to me. I'll do it both ways. So, here we go. I'm going to first start it in point slope form, and then I'm going to also convert, I'm also going to redo the problem in slope intercept form. The next two that I do will be just in slope intercept form, so I'll tend to go that route. All right, so find a line parallel to that. Well, if we want to find a line parallel to it, we need the same slope. Same slope. Which means we need to find the slope of 2x minus 3y equals 6. So if 2x minus 3y is equal to 6, I need to find that slope. You can do one of two things here. You can find two points on that line and then calculate the slope between them. Or you can move this into a slope intercept form and, and extract the slope from the value m. That's the way I'm going to work this particular one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start off by adding 3y to both sides. That way I don't have to divide by a negative later. That's going to give me 2x is equal to 6 plus 3y. Then I'm going to subtract off 6 from both sides. And so I get 2x minus 6 is equal to 3y. Finally, yes, I love you. My dog wants me to play with her because I'm doing something, and that's usually when that happens. All right, so when I do this, I go ahead and I reduce this down to 2 thirds x minus 2 is equal to y. If you don't like this, you can switch it around and it's y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 2. It doesn't really matter the order of the equality. 
Now I can go ahead and extract the value that I need, which is this number in front of x. That's my slope. Since it's parallel, it needs the same slope. So I now have a slope. My slope is 1 half. And I, or I'm sorry, 2 thirds. Well, I don't know where I got 1 half from. 2 thirds. And my point here is the point 2, 7. I can go ahead and just chuck this directly into the point slope form. So it's going to be y minus 7 is equal to 2 thirds in parentheses x minus 2. And I'm done. That's it. Ta da. <laughs> the, the end. I could leave it like that. Most instructors, most books, that sort of thing, will want you to practice putting it in slope intercept form. Your calculators tend to use slope intercept form only when dealing with functions, uh, especially linear functions, and therefore we just go ahead and, and, and deal with that issue right now. One of two things can happen. You could redo the problem using just the, the slope intercept form, or just simply solve this one in the yellow for y. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the, the 2 thirds, giving us 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds. And then I'm going to add 7, add 7. Now when I do this, i got to remember that these need common denominators. So just to kind of lay it out directly, y is equal to 2 thirds x. Now this is going to be minus 4 thirds plus 21 thirds. 7 as a fraction in thirds is 21 thirds. Multiply the top and the bottom by 3. The assumption is it's 7 over 1. So I combine those, uh, those like terms here and that's going to give me 2 thirds x plus 17 over 3. Not a very nice number but it doesn't really matter. We don't have to like it, we just have to have it right. So anyway, that's, that's one way to do it. A different way to do it, you still need the same information, uh, but a different way to do it is to just go ahead and put it directly into the slope intercept form. By now, if you're watching a video similar to this, then you should have already gone through this whole idea that any point on the line is a solution to the equation that maps that line. So since we have to have the point 2, 7 on our line, it is also a solution to our equation. So I can just simply put in the x and y values into the slope intercept form. That's going to give me 7 is equal to, the slope is 2 thirds, the x value is 2, and then plus b. I don't know what b is, so I'm going to try to find it. So I have 7 is equal to 4 thirds b, or 4 thirds plus b, I mean. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 4 thirds from both sides. Recall from over here in red that I can use a common denominator, so this is going to be 21 thirds minus 4 thirds is equal to b which means that b is equal to 17 thirds. I now have a value of b, I now have a slope. I can go ahead and plug that stuff right back into the slope intercept form, giving me 2 thirds x plus 17 over 3. And that's it. Notice that they're the same. It doesn't matter which one you use, it's going to produce the same answer. All right, I've got a couple more of these to do. And they're going to get progressively more difficult, although the, the difficulty is going to lie in where do you extract the information from. Find the line perpendicular to this, passing through that point 1, 2. So again, recall that we, perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal my English is terrible. Slopes. As an example, this is going to be something like if, if I had a slope of, say, uh, negative 3 halves, then my perpendicular slope, usually an upside down capital T is used for perpendicular, my perpendicular slope would be the opposite of this negative, which would be positive, and then I flip the fraction, and that's it. So these two, fra these two slopes are perpendicular to one another. That means I'm still going to have to find this slope, so I have to extract the slope from this equation. Perhaps you noticed from the previous one, I don't need all of it. I just need the x and the y. This 8 isn't going to mean anything. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this for y. This will give me, oh, I'm just going to do it this way, minus 2x is equal to negative 4y. I subtracted 4y from both sides. I normally don't choose to do this, but I'm getting lazy. 
divide both sides by negative 4. Negative, or 8 divided by negative 4 is a negative 2. I'm going to move my x's to the front of the pack here, so this is going to be a positive 1 half x. And that equals y. Apparently I've got more questions coming in. If you wanted to rewrite this as y equals 1 half x minus 2, that's perfectly fine. We don't need anything out of this except for this slope, because we have to be perpendicular to that. So if I have 1 half and I want to go perpendicular, that's going to send me to negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So I have a slope of negative 2 for the line I'm talking about. So my m value is 2, it, I'm sorry, is negative 2. I have a point of 1 comma 2. Again, if you want to put it in point slope form, that's fine. If you're required to put it in the slope intercept form, then we can just do that from here. y equals mx plus b. This is x, this is y, this is m. So we just plug all that information in. That's going to give us 2 is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus b. That's going to give us 2 is equal to negative 2 plus b. If I add 2 to both sides, I get 4 is equal to b. Finally, then I can state that because I have a slope of negative 2 and I have a b value of 4, then y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. That right there will be perpendicular to 8 minus 2x plus y, 4y equals 0, and it'll pass through the point 1, 2. And you say, why would you ever need something like this? If you've ever driven in a town like Grand Rapids, Michigan, typically you have roads that literally go all over the place. In fact, almost, it's almost like a, a, a wheel spoke as far as how it's dictated. So we, we, have, <clears throat> we not only have north-south roads, but we also have northeast, southeast, southwest, that, that sort of thing. So all of these will come into a different spot, but you really want them to be perpendicular. It gives you the most vision. You don't want anything like this because if you're coming up here and you're trying to turn, it's, it, you don't get as good vision that way. Plus, it takes a lot, uh, it's a lot harder to turn onto a road that's not 90 degrees. In that case, then, you might represent a lot of these with, with lines. And if you're doing that, then you want to find out, okay, well, what, in which direction should my perpendicular line go? These can help you do that. So if you're mapping out a city for the first time or you're having to expand that sort of thing, you might find them using something similar to this. It's to figure out exactly how to lay out the city. There might be a best way, but then it'll change and, and roads can't be redone that quickly. So, yeah. All right. Moving on. This is our last one and, and well, our hardest one. So this is find an equation for the line perpendicular to that, and that has the same y-intercept. So we're, we're not given a point specifically. We're just simply saying it has the same y-intercept as that second equation. So the first thing we need to do is find a slope. So we need the slope out of 9x minus 4y is equal to 17. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and add 4y to both sides. I'm now going to subtract 17 from both sides at the same time, just to save a little bit of space. Giving me 9x minus 17 is equal. These cancel here. These, I'm sorry, they, they eliminate. They do not cancel. They eliminate, giving us 4y. Dividing both sides by 4 is going to give us 9 fourths x minus 17 fourths, which we don't really care about because we don't need. We just need this piece right here. So I could have saved myself a little bit of trouble and eliminated the 17 right from the get-go and just dealt with x's and y's. Now I have a slope, this is my slope, so my perpendicular slope is the opposite, so this was positive, I change it to a negative, I flip the fraction. So, it's, so it'd be negative 4 ninths. I then need to find the y-intercept using uh, from this particular equation. You can do this one of two ways. You could solve it for y, and then the number that's not associated with the x is the, is the y value of the y-intercept. However, I also know that the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in x equals 0, and that's going to kill that whole term. It'll go to 0. And then that's going to leave me with 7y is equal to 26. And if I divide by 7 on both sides, I get y is equal to 26 sevenths. So now, this is my y-intercept. 
So it has this slope, it has this y-intercept. I can just go ahead and plug this directly into the slope-intercept form without any other calculation. y is equal to negative 4 ninths x plus 26 sevenths. And that's it. So it just depends on what kind of information you're given. It also it depends very heavily on whether it's asking you if it's parallel or perpendicular. If you're working these problems, step one, find the slope of the line you need to be referenced to. So if it says parallel to this line, go find the slope of the this line part and then make it the same slope. If it's perpendicular, go find the slope of the this line and then take the opposite reciprocal. Uh, then the next piece is you're going to need a point of some sort. It can be given to you either as an absolute point or referenced through another equation, that sort of thing. So those are the only two things that you need. And once you have those, you can go ahead and use the point slope form or the slope intercept form to find an equation for that particular uh, line that you wish to use. All right. I hope this helped. Take care.